from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A line of storms coming through the area triggered a tornado watch for most of the overnight hours. We'll get an update with Mike Osterhage coming up. A worrying uptick in new coronavirus cases while vaccinations were also ramping up. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's actually 60 degrees, not 64. Uh, kind of cool after some of those overnight showers. And we still have some activity as you saw on radar. We'll talk to Mike in just a moment. Good morning to you. It's Thursday. We're at March 25th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And if you want more rain, well, you got it. <laughs> some of you have had showers and storms in the overnight hours. And Mike Osterich is here with more on where they really got soaked in the overnight hours. Yeah, in, in parts of the hill country, uh, we did have uh, severe weather overnight. There were some severe storms that were reported. We did have that tornado watch that went into effect late last night. Nothing is in effect as of right now. We do still have some rain around the area. As a matter of fact, it looks like there might be a couple of raindrops on the lens over there by the uh, airport. And this is what it looks like on radar as of right now. Uh, what's interesting is, first of all, watch this cell right here. We had a couple of leftover cells just about an hour or so ago. Bam Bandera as well as Kendall County and they kept moving off to the northeast and now there's a pretty good spot up there just to the north of Austin but obviously that's out of our area and then you can see a few more of these showers are popping up here Medina as well as Frio counties everything is sliding up to the northeast so we're not done with it yet. The other interesting that's the interesting thing that's going on is look at this line right here. That's the front that's moving on through here, and that's why temperatures are continuing to drop down. The winds are starting to uh, shift around a little bit more, and yeah, it's going to be uh, very pleasant later on this afternoon, but we do get the drier air, and, and that's what happened is that front kind of came in here. You had all these thunderstorms building, and it was kind of cutting it off at the knees, if you will, so that's why in the past couple of hours, the, the whole atmosphere has kind of really stabilized and settled down just a little bit. And so that's why we were not seeing any more uh, severe weather past about, uh, say, 2 o'clock this morning. 60 here in town, low 50s in parts of the hill country. And the humidity, the air is continuing to dry out. We had a lot of humidity, very unstable air, but that drier air is going to continue to work its way on in here. Wind is out of the northwest now, 15, 20 miles per hour. And we do have a couple of wind gusts. I mean, it's 25 out there at the airport, 30 in New Braunfels, so it is going to be breezy, 32 mile per hour wind gusts in Hondo. Breezier in the first portion of the day, still a, a decent breeze, but it's going to settle down later on this afternoon. Molds on the high side, low amounts of everything else. And as of yesterday's reading, dust was on the, the heavy side as well. That's what helped out with some of that fog around the area yesterday. I'm going for 55 this morning, so we'll continue to drop down a little bit more. Breezy, rain is going to continue. We'll have some around the next couple of hours, but it's going to continue to end then from uh, west to east throughout the morning. Wind out of the northwest, 15, 25 miles per hour. 77 for a high temperature today. Good looking day. Plenty of sunshine, low humidity. Then we turn the heat up and then we're going to be cooling down again. Another front, another rain chance. More on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Sam King is back. And what's going on? <laughs> Thanks, Round everybody. of applause from the peanut yeah, gallery. Round of applause. <laughs> Boy, that's uh, something to uh, live up to uh, this morning. Thanks, uh, everyone, and good to be back. And thanks, Sarah, for filling in the past uh, few days. And Mike is talking about the rain and things are looking okay as we look at Trans Guide at 90 at General McMullen. Some rain here and there, so we'll continue to watch that throughout the morning. Travel time's looking fairly normal right now. 26 minutes coming in from Bernie on I-10, and also 26 minutes coming in on 35 from New Braunfels. This is a look uh, at uh, the maps here as we uh, go head over to the wall and let's look at some construction. This is on the, in Comal County here, uh, northbound 35 at FM 1103. We have a bit of uh, one lane blocked uh, northbound. The uh, right lane appears as blocked northbound, so watch out for that, but traffic still flowing well at this hour. Uh, time is good. Now let's go all the way over here to the west side. Uh, we again have this construction this week at Loop 410 at State Highway 50, uh, 151 until 5 o'clock this morning. And once again, here's a look at Transkai. This is 35 at Evans flowing well this morning. We'll have another update coming up, guys. Thank you, Samuel. An argument ends with one man almost losing a finger. According to SAPD, this happened in the 4800 block of West Military, not too far from Medina Base Road in southwest Bear County. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown. And Stephen, do police know what started this argument? Mark Stephanie, that is still not clear at this time. San Antonio police say that this argument actually started at a homeless camp in the woods not too far from Pearsall Park. 
Now, this all happened just before midnight. Police believe the argument escalated at the camp. They say they are not sure if the man was the instigator of the argument, but at one point a machete was said to be used. The man who is believed to be in his 30s was found on Old Pearsall Road and Medina Base Road not too far from the camp. Police say his finger had almost been cut off. Now, police are still investigating this morning, but they say the man was not being very cooperative at the time. He refused to actually go to the hospital be, to be treated for his injury until he got his cell phone back. Again, right now, this remains under investigation this morning. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Three suspects are on the run this morning following a shooting on the northeast side. Now, this happened around 8 p.m. last night on Winsford near Bridal Way. That's not far from Walsham Road and New World Drive. Investigators say one man was shot in the shoulder while trying to drive away from the scene. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. No word yet on why this shooting started. COVID-19 vaccinations continue to ramp up across the country. So far, 84 million people have now received at least one shot. But some health experts say it's still not enough for restrictions to be lifted. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. Progress in the fight against COVID-19, but health experts worry some may be taking a victory lap before the battle is won. What concerns me is the footage of um, what's happening in spring breakers and people who are not continuing to um, implement prevention strategies while we get fully scaled up. This month alone in Michigan, new infections increased threefold. The number of COVID patients in hospitals doubled. It just takes one weekend getting nice weather and relaxing. Um, following those guidelines and, and we end up sliding backwards. Across the country, increasing red flags. The U.S. still averaging about 55,000 new cases a day. In just the past seven days, at least 16 states seeing new infections grow by 10 percent. We are at the corner. Whether or not we're going to be turning that corner still remains to be seen. Success still within reach as vaccine distribution ramps up. The Biden administration shipping more than 27 million doses this week. AstraZeneca still hoping to add its vaccine to the stock after the company updated its efficacy data, showing their vaccine is 76 percent effective against symptomatic COVID. That is slightly lower than what the company announced earlier this week in a report criticized for using outdated information. Meantime, expanding eligibility, 28 states in Washington, D.C., allowing anyone over the age of 16 to get the jab by May 1st. In Arizona, those appointments fully booked within 20 minutes. When I would refresh, another day would pop up and I would click on it. It says no availability. The Ad Council just launched a nationwide vaccination campaign targeting conservatives and sports fans, suggesting that normalcy is around the corner if everyone can do their part. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. We have an update on the pandemic here at home. The seven day average continues to drop. It now stands at 160 cases per 24 hours. No new deaths have been reported. This morning, a total of 183 COVID patients are in the hospital. 63 are in intensive care. 37 are on ventilators. And time now is 438 and it's actually 60 degrees right now. Still ahead on TMSA, U.S. Supreme Court could soon consider the question of whether people can openly carry weapons despite state restrictions. And it was not a good night for the San Antonio Spurs. Kawhi Leonard was back in town, and he did his best to make it tough for our team. Highlights are just ahead. Outside with live cam, some of you are saying, I didn't get your rain. The rest of you, you might be seeing a shower or storm as we speak. Mike will have an update on radar, and we'll check on the roads with Samuel now that he's back. And welcome back. It's 441. President Biden will hold the first formal news conference of his presidency this afternoon. This comes more than two months after he was sworn in. He is expected to highlight meeting his goals of administering 100 million doses of coronavirus vaccine in 100 days, way ahead of schedule. Now, he is also expected to talk about the passage of his $1.9 trillion pandemic relief bill. He'll likely face scrutiny on gun control and immigration. We plan to broadcast that news conference beginning around 1215 this afternoon, right here on KSET 12. And the question of whether people can openly carry guns despite state restrictions is likely heading to the U.S. Supreme Court. A federal appeals court ruled Wednesday that states can require gun owners to hold open carry licenses. And to get a license, they have to show a need to protect themselves 
or their property. The 7-4 ruling rejects a resident's Second Amendment claims. It comes as a nation debates gun reform in light of deadly mass shootings in Atlanta and Colorado. If the U.S. Supreme Court takes up the case, it could lead to the most significant ruling on firearms in a more than a decade. And that ruling would come from justices hesitant to curtail Second Amendment rights. Former Spurs star Kawhi Leonard made his return to San Antonio last night after the Spurs beat the Clippers in L.A. earlier this season. The first game of back-to-backs. Kawhi had 25 points in the night and the Clips never trailed, beating the Spurs handily 134-101. Kawhi was booed during pregame introductions pretty much every time he touched the ball. The jeers were not as loud as his three previous visits to the at &C Center and waned as the game progressed as the Spurs gave fans little to root for. Kawhi finished 9 for 12 shooting, making both of his three-point attempts and all five of his free throws. DeMar DeRozan led San Antonio with 19. Patty Mills added 16. San Antonio was 7 for 22 on threes and committed 16 turnovers. Spurs have trailed by at least 10 points in 61% of their games this season and are now 9 for 16 when facing that kind of deficit. Clips and Spurs will meet again tonight in the finale of that two game set here in SA tip off set for 730 at the AT&T Center. Better luck tonight, guys. Yeah, I hope so. I don't think we should boo Kawhi. I mean, look what happened. Maybe we should be quiet. <laughs> it would be better we, that do, way. Are you saying we boo the Spurs? <laughs> no, we oh. just don't boo anyone. We just don't say anything. Of course, cheer for the Spurs. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the always upbeat Stephanie Cerna. <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat that. Five, uh, 444. We are at about 60 degrees. And coming up next, Trouble in Paradise. Details on the FBI investigation into the disappearance of a British woman in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And welcome back. It's 446. The FBI investigating the disappearance of a British woman in the U.S. Virgin Islands. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, mystery in paradise. The timeline of things doesn't add up that we've got. 41 year old Sarm Heslop was last seen more than two weeks ago with her boyfriend in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Her friends and family desperate for answers. According to Virgin Islands police, the British woman and 44 year old American Ryan Bain had dinner together on the island on March 7th and returned to his catamaran for the night. Around 2.30 a.m., Bain called 911 to report Heslop missing when he woke up and she was nowhere to be found. Officers instructed Bain to contact the U.S. Coast Guard, which he eventually did later that morning. For me, if you thought that she'd fallen overboard, then you would have called the Coast Guard straight away, or at least I would have. Police immediately searched the land nearby, but say Bain denied requests to search the vessel. And we'll have much more on this urgent search coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Just about 448. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Welcome back. Thank you, Stephanie Mark. I'm glad to uh, be back. And some good news if you're traveling to Comal County northbound on 35. They've just picked up the cones there, so traffic should be flowing well. The right lane had been closed overnight uh, because of uh, construction, but you can see traffic is starting to flow there. So let's take a look at that uh, on uh, the maps here. Again, this is a 35 at FM 1103 uh, here, so traffic starting to flow well, 70 miles per hour north, uh, southbound, 68 miles per hour uh, northbound. Taking a look, a wider view of the area, looking at the maps, we put on the road weather tool here, so you can see uh, wet roads, particularly north of 90 here so if you're heading and starting your commute in the next uh, 15 20 minutes or so or even the next hour uh, you'll encounter some uh, wet roadways also seeing uh, some wet roadways here out here uh, 1604 and uh, uh, Bandera Road, for example, so something to watch out for. On 410, had some construction overnight. That should be being picked up soon. Uh, traffic time's looking good there, 7 miles per hour each way. Again, this is uh, 35 1103. The construction has been picked up for now, so at least in that area, it's flowing well, but of course, you'll hit more construction as you get over to New Braunfels, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Tis the season for storms and wildfires. Mike, Facebook memories yesterday? I, five years ago yesterday, I took a picture almost exactly oh, really? like that popped huh. up in my feed. It's great. I mean, hopefully you get some rain to help out with some of these, uh, you know, spring flowers out there. Um, the good news is we don't have anything as far as any warnings, advisories, anything like that out there. We do have some rain, so just assume if the even if the roads aren't wet right now, they are going to be. And as you can see, uh, got some rain out there on the uh, live cam and it's shaking a little bit because that front has moved on through and that is uh, <laughs> 
It's bringing in some wind that's gusting close to 30 miles per hour in some cases. So here's the uh, the latest and as far as radar and we've got first of all, notice that line right there. There's the front working its way on through here and more of these showers which started to pop up. Things really started to obviously settle down a couple of hours ago and more of this rain is popping up moving in from the southwest up to the northeast and so on the uh, well, Basically, the western half of uh, San Antonio, we do have some rain around here. Another view of the front that's moving on through, and all this rain will continue for about the next uh, couple of hours or even getting out of here quicker than that. Then we're going to start to see things clear out. As a matter of fact, there have, are some uh, reports of some clear skies well out to the west. Also, notice how the humidity is changing. Dew points 69 pleasant and 51 in town. This is the air that we were in just to say an hour or so ago. Now the front's moving on in here, pulling in that drier air. And so it's going to be really comfortable today. Plenty of sunshine, beautiful, kind of coolish, kind of sort of maybe tomorrow morning. And then we really heat up, though, during the day tomorrow with this somewhat drier air in place. And then also notice how by tomorrow night the wind starts to shift back around out of the southeast. So that's going to pull the humidity in here fairly quickly. Then by Saturday morning, going back in time. You can see as this loops on through, there's the thunderstorms that developed. They did produce some severe weather. There were reports of uh, some pretty good uh, winds and hail, winds in excess of 60 miles per hour, hail uh, bigger than one inch in diameter, which prompted some severe uh, thunderstorm warnings earlier this morning, the latest being for portions of uh, Bandera County as well as portions of Kerr County, and then all that sort of fizzled on out and really stabilized. Now, the next system coming in here from the west is going to to not leave the dry air in place very long. Humidity, like I said, returns very quickly, and then we're going to see another rain chance move on in here. So today, tomorrow looks fantastic. Saturday, a lot more clouds. Maybe a, this kind of broad brushes things, but maybe a couple of showers early on Saturday, one or two throughout the day. But then the next system comes in here, and it looks like a fairly decent chance for some rain, more of just a rain event on Sunday. Also, significantly cooler air on Sunday. It's going to be a whole big change between Saturday and Sunday 70 today at noon, sunny, a little, little bit on the breezy side still, and then a high temperature up to 77. Good looking day today. Tomorrow, very nice, still pleasant with the humidity, but it's going to be much warmer up to 83, 85 on Saturday, and we will have a lot of clouds around here. And looks like a good shot of rain on Sunday. And notice the temperatures. 85 Saturday, 72 on Sunday, 73 on Monday. So significantly cooler than back to the 80s midweek. Oh, that's better because uh, yeah. it was looking like pretty warm mm -hmm. all weekend long. Yeah, uh, it had changed. There were a lot of computer mm -hmm. models kind of going back and forth. Still, some aren't really on board with that yet, but it is looking like it is going to be significantly cooler than on Sunday. More rain chances. That's great news, but watch out for the rain this morning, too. All right, we'll look out for that. Thank you, Mike. 452, about 60 degrees. And still ahead, Netflix kicking off the spring season with a faith-based teen musical. Plus, Marvel's newest series continues on Disney Plus following a cliffhanger. Five Till Netflix showing off its newest teen music that's faith based. Plus, Marvel's newest series continues on Disney Plus. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You didn't tell me this was church camp. It's going to be great. Netflix already getting ready for the summer with the teen musical A Week Away. The film a little different than most teen films, this one faith based. A lot of the songs spiritual. And that was exciting for star and producer Bailey Madison. Obviously, like so exciting for us to have a film like that, that, that feels like it's for us, but um, it doesn't feel separate from anyone else. And that, that is something that I really love about it. Um, hopefully it, it, it has something for everyone and, you know, can spread a little bit of hope and love and light. A Week Away is ready to stream tomorrow on Netflix. And less than 24 hours until episode two of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the first episode ending with a surprise reveal dealing with Anthony Mackie's The Falcon and his decision over whether or not to become the next Captain America, a decision that director Kerry Scoglin says will be explored in episodes to come. What's his future? Does he want to pick up the shield? Does he not want to? What is that for a black man? What is that for a black community? What is that for the white community? Episode two of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier drops tomorrow on Disney+. Plus. Break Out the Broomsticks, another Bewitched movie, is in the works. The 1960s sitcom about a witch and her mortal husband, Darren, ran for eight seasons, and then it was a 2005 film starring Nicole Kidman and Will Ferrell. No word yet. Who will get to wrinkle her nose is Samantha this time. And legendary singer and piano player Elton John with a birthday today, he's 74, while Sex and the City star Sarah Jessica Parker is 56.
And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, it's 457 and about 62 degrees right now. Still ahead on the morning show, we have the latest on in the investigation into that mass shooting in Boulder, Colorado. What law enforcement officials are now saying about the suspect? Plus, Dyson showing off its newest vacuum that has a laser attached to help you destroy all the dirt in your home. Details ahead in Tech. What's that going to cost? I don't know. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now, still have an eye on the sky. We're continuing to monitor some showers and storms making their way through the KSAT 12 viewing area. Mike will have an update coming up. Plus, latest on the mass shooting investigation in Colorado as investigators try to learn more about the shooter. Outside with live cam, it's comfortable now. We do have obviously some moisture in the area, a few raindrops on the camera lens as we try to look back towards downtown. Mike said a front has actually moved through San Antonio. We'll talk to him in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday, the 25th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And, and this time around, I think I slept through the rain that we got. Yeah, I missed most of it. Mm -hmm. Tried to beat those storms to work this morning. Well, Mike, the weather teams have been up all night keeping an eye on these storms. Yeah, and uh, things were getting pretty rough earlier this morning in the overnight hours up to about, uh, say, 2 o'clock or so. We did have some severe storms out in portions of the hill country, and then the everything really started to stabilize. There were some things that went on in the atmosphere and we started seeing the indications that uh, started to die down. There are no advisories, no warnings, anything like that in effect right now, but we do still have some rain out there. We are down to 59 degrees and the wind is out of the north at 16. Also notice the bottom number is down to 53. That dew point was up in the mid and upper 60s just a couple of hours ago. So yes, the front has moved on through here. We're going to warm up nicely, getting up to 77 later on today. Low humidity humidity and it won't be as breezy later on today, but we still have a decent wind uh, this morning. The aquifer went up again on yesterday's reading one tenth of a foot. Allergens do have a lot of mold up there, and I would imagine with some of the rain this morning, that number is probably going to be high again later on when the update comes out about uh, 7, 7.30 this morning and all the other allergens are on the low side. Here's a look at radar right now, and yeah, we do still have some rain out there, but uh, all the really strong stuff uh, actually don't even see any lightning strikes being detected in in and around our area as of right now. But there are still a few, you know, decent showers, a couple of spots of some orange and a little red, and then also watch the that line right there. That's the front which is moving on through and that's ushering in the drier air as well as the the breezy conditions. So just assuming even down there around uh, 37 410 pretty good, pretty hefty downpour right now, but it's moving along fairly quickly. So we're getting some decent rain. It's not just sitting in one spot, so it doesn't look like we'll uh, really have to deal with any any pond. There may be a little bit of ponding on some of the roads, though, and even up in portions of the hill country. This is just uh, some moderate and maybe a couple of decent downpours in any of the uh, strong storms moved off and they're well up northeast of uh, Austin right now. Wind though, look at that, Port S.A., 21 mile per hour wind, same thing in Castroville, Hondo. These are the sustained winds. And then you got the gusts up to 31, Port S.A., 32, Hondo, 25 at the airport. So very windy this morning. And still a breeze today, not as windy. Rain will be sticking around for at least about the next hour or so, then ending breezy this morning. Good looking day, sunny upper 70s, getting low humidity, really, really nice. Sunny, but it's going to be heating up into the mid 80s tomorrow, low to mid 80s. Still okay humidity, then the humidity comes back in here on Saturday. A couple of sprinkles are possible. Front comes through on Sunday. We got good chance of rain and much cooler temperatures. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King got some wet roads. Any problems, sir? Uh, we do have a problem we'll get to in just a moment, but you mentioned the wet roads. This is a 90 at General McMullen. You can see uh, the traffic there uh, flowing well, but you can see a little bit of uh, moisture there on the roadway, so be careful if you're in that area. 20 minutes now from Cashville to downtown on 90, 30 minutes from the Pleasanton area to downtown, so those traffic times looking okay for now. As we take a look at the maps, though, we do have a new crash uh, reported here. This is on the north side. Uh, this is a very busy area of course 281 at 1604 this one just coming in so I'll take a look at things and get you another update to see how that's impacting traffic flows in just a few minutes here uh, we did mention the rain it is uh, there's some wet roads across the area we mentioned 90 uh, 6 uh, 410 at Bandera 410 at uh, Fredericksburg Road as well seeing some wet weather here's a look at travel times of Bandera real quick 11 to 12 minutes between uh, 1604 and 410 again some wet roads in the 
that area. So watch out for that this morning. We'll have another update on that crash at 281 and 1604 coming up, guys. Late breaking news. Two people in the hospital after being shot inside an apartment this morning. San Antonio police are investigating in the 100 block of Del Mar on the city's southeast side. Our Katrina Weber is live at the scene. Katrina, what can you tell us? Well, I can tell you police right now are saying that this looks like an accident. Two people hit by one single bullet inside an apartment here. They are, have been investigating here in the ground floor unit uh, just past the gate back there. They've been here since around 4 o'clock this morning. The police say it looks like a man was cleaning his gun when it accidentally discharged. The bullet went through his arm and then hit his girlfriend who was sitting on a bed, hit her in the stomach. So she suffered the more serious injury, but both of them were taken to a hospital. A police say that the evidence seems to match up exactly with the story that they have been told. So they think that this is nothing more than an accident at this point. Now there was a teenage girl inside the house, but police say she was in a different room of the house and she was not hurt at all by what happened here this morning. But again, no one in custody, two people in the hospital. Police are calling this an accident at this point. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, San Antonio police believe a machete was used in an argument that ended with one man almost losing a finger. That argument broke out at a homeless camp in the 4800 block of West Military near Medina Base Road in southwest Bear County. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning with the latest on the investigation. Well, Mark, Stephanie, that investigation is still ongoing this morning. San Antonio police are not sure how this argument started, but they say things escalated violently when that machete was used to almost cut off that man's finger. Now, according to police, this all broke out at that homeless camp just before one this morning. Uh, that homeless camp was said to be in the woods right next to Pearsall Park. The man who is believed to be in his 30s was found not too far from there on Old Pearsall Road and Medina Base Road. Again, that was not too far from the camp. Multiple crews were out on the scene. This this morning to investigate, but police say the man was not being very cooperative. He refused to go to the hospital for treatment until he had gotten his cell phone back. Now, it is still not clear whether or not that man was the instigator involved in this argument, and police have not said whether or not they have identified another suspect. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Right now it's 5.07, a new bulletin for law enforcement agencies across the country. Warnings about more acts of violence following the recent incident in Boulder, Colorado. The suspect is due in court today. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Overnight, tributes across Boulder for the victims of Monday's supermarket shooting. From candlelight vigils to this procession for Officer Eric Talley, who died in the attack. And the city council holding a special meeting for the public to discuss their grief. Denny was my student for three years. One speaker, a former high school teacher of one of the victims, Denny Stong, who worked at the supermarket. I thought about the Santa hat Denny wore every day of December, every year that I taught him. The speaker he carried down the halls during passing periods and drive everyone crazy with his old soul or holiday music. Stong was one of 10 people killed Monday when police say a gunman opened fire in the King Supers parking lot before continuing his rampage inside. That 21-year-old suspect is expected to make his first court appearance today. He's a U.S. citizen who came here from Syria when he was three. Sources say investigators are learning about his quick temper and possible psychiatric issues, but still no word on why the supermarket was targeted. This morning, survivors are grappling with a new reality. Darcy Lopez managed the cheese counter at the store. She crawled into a cabinet when the shooting started. I was cramped into a little ball. We were just waiting for a gunman to come around the corner and end it and shoot us. I just said to myself, if this is the world that I live in, just take me. Just take me. I, I don't want to live in this world. Meanwhile, 1,400 miles away, police arrested a man who walked into this grocery store in Atlanta Wednesday. They say he was carrying two long guns and three pistols. He was sent for a psychiatric evaluation. Law enforcement agencies across the country are being warned to take more precautions. A bulletin from counterterrorism experts with the NYPD is warning of more public acts of violence, adding malicious actors may view the loosening of restrictive COVID-19 related public health and safety measures as a chance to perpetrate violence. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And time now is 509 and it's actually 59 degrees right now. Still ahead, we'll tell you about Dyson's fancy new vacuum that uses a laser to <laughs> help you get all the <laughs> hidden dirt and dust in your home.
Yeah, very fancy. And March Madness is in full swing, and many have already had their brackets busted. But research shows it can also bust the bottom line for employers. Just ahead, we look at how much money companies lose during the tournament and why bosses shouldn't fight employees looking to have a little fun. Outside with live cam, Michael gets you updated on the showers and storms and a change in temperatures happening as we speak. You're watching GMSA. Welcome back and good morning. If you're just now tuning in, it's 513. We're right in the middle of March Madness. And as you can imagine, both the men's and women's tournament can cause some problems for employers when uh, people continue to watch games during working hours. <laughs> so should employers really be concerned? Our Stephen Cavazos explains. This is a time of year many look forward to, March Madness. It's a time for close calls, busted brackets, and big, memorable moments in college basketball. But all that can come at a price, especially for your employer. According to Challenger Gray and Christmas Inc., a work outplacement firm, U.S. employers can lose around an average of $13.3 billion in productivity during the tournament. That is based on an average hourly earning of $27 an hour for all employees on private non-farm payrolls. The firm also estimated that each hour spent on games at work can cost employers about $2.1 billion. Those numbers include time spent actually watching the games, filling out brackets, and just talking in general about the game to co-workers. During the study, the research found nearly half of all works, about 75 million people would spend around six hours of work time on March Madness activities throughout the tournament. And of course, this year, people are working from home and combining their work time with March Madness time even more. But the challenger firm is encouraging companies to embrace this. And instead of prohibiting employees from watching it, they could turn it into a bonding experience for their team by doing an office pool or hosting a viewing party on Zoom. They say this could also be a great stress reliever considering everything people have been going through with a pandemic and it can pay off in the long run. A number of studies show happy employees not only work more quickly, but also perform better than workers who are not happy. Stephen Cavasso's case at 12 News. Well, it's even more fun this year, considering the NCAA Women's Tournament is right here in the Alamo I City. I know, very, very close. We had an interesting story about all the volunteers helping out there, so we want to thank them as the well. San Antonio Hospitality in its finest. 515, about 60 degrees. And still ahead, details on Uber's new partnership with a popular prescription service. Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting <coughs> on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. No matter how you got COPD, it's time to make a stand. And I'm feeling. Start a new day with Trilogy. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. It's time to start a new day. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. In today's Tech Vice, prescription drug delivery. Uber is teaming up with ScriptDrop to expand its service into 37 states. It allows even small pharmacies to offer easy and efficient home delivery to all customers. People who love Dyson vacuums have something new to celebrate. The company is out with a new model which can shine a laser to reveal dirt not visible to the naked eye. And once you've run the vacuum over an area, the laser will let you know if you missed anything. It's not cheap about 700 bucks. A Russian company is creating a new breed of humanoids with the most realistic looking skin. They're using special resin and 3D printing. They say every pore and dent on the skin is drawn in a 3D model and transferred into a mold. For the lifelike appearance, the silicone skin is applied layer by layer. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. That's creepy.
<laughs> Definitely. With a capital C. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No, no, no. Let's check traffic right now. It's 519. How's it looking, Samuel? You stole the word there from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that did look uh, pretty uh, creepy, uh, to say the least. So we will move on to uh, 281. We mentioned at the top of uh, the newscast there was a crash at 281 and 1604. Uh, this is looking northbound, but it appears uh, that crash is cleared. But one thing you notice along with the, the rain out there, it is uh, pretty uh, windy. Uh, so let's take a look uh, at the map, just get a closer look at this uh, area. But again, uh, this crash now has been uh, appears to have been cleared. So uh, traffic up to 57 miles per hour here at 281 and 1604. Just another uh, sign of what's going on in the area. Uh, we're talking about some of the uh, rain out there that's moving in. So this is an indication of areas where you might see some uh, wet roads and that includes 281 uh, between 1604 and 410 and all the way into downtown actually also uh, Bandera Road, Fredericksburg Road. So if you're traveling out and about, just keep in mind there are some wet roads out there uh, this morning. Take a look at some travel times now. 27 minutes coming all the way in from uh, Belverde on 281, 20 minutes on 90 from Castroville, 25 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. And again, here's a look at 281 and winding way. The wind that might be a function of where the uh, camera is, but uh, definitely some uh, tricky conditions if you're heading out. It could be worse, but it could also be a lot better. So plan for it. plenty of extra time. Now that camera's really moving right now. Definitely windy well, out there. We've got winds gusting about 30 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. So and that's going to be the case throughout most of the morning and dealing with the rain, but then it's, it'll settle down somewhat beautiful day in store. Speaking of beautiful, another fantastic picture from Mr. McClellan over there at Woodlawn Lake. Thank you very much. Sunrise sunset, pardon me, is going to be spectacular. So fire up your cameras over there at Woodlawn Lake again this evening. There's the rain out there by the airport. We're looking off to the northwest. There's the uh, control tower back off there in the distance. So the roads are definitely wet pretty much all around town. Uh, notice how the rain is definitely coming to an end. A couple leftover uh, little sprinkles there in parts of Medina County just south of Hondo, but in and around town. You have some moderate rain uh, up there on the northwest side, uh, right about the 410 I-10 area. And so, uh, yeah, just uh, scattered showers here and there all around. And the front moved uh, on through. That's that line right there as the front continues to work its way down to the, uh, the southeast. High temperature yesterday really depended on where the clouds were. A lot of sunshine down to the south Southwest got up in the mid 90s down around Laredo, Catula, 83 Hondo, and then 77 here in town. And that's about where we're going to be today. But we have sunshine today. That's the, the big difference mid and some upper 70s, even some low 80s around the area because we do have this cooler air in place. And that's going to put us up to basically a normal high temperature, an average high temperature, 30 year average. Now the humidity is dropping down and it's going to stay low today as well as tomorrow. Shoots right back up here on Saturday. So we'll still be in about the same temperature, but with these dew points up in the 60s, it's going to feel a whole heck of a lot hotter on Saturday. A lot more clouds are on Saturday as well. Then we have a front moving on through Saturday night into Sunday. That's going to knock the humidity out again, and that's really going to knock temperatures down as well. Sunday is actually going to be on the on the cool side will only be in the low 70s for a high temperature on Sunday. Well below normal. Plenty of sunshine today. We'll keep the rain around for uh, here in town the next maybe hour, if that, and it will continue to end from uh, west to east throughout the rest of the, the morning and then clear things out. Tomorrow looks great. Saturday, a couple of sprinkles are possible. Again, this is kind of a broad brush right there, but uh, most noticeably late uh, Saturday night into Sunday, we do have those showers that are going to be moving on in here. It looks like a fairly decent rain event is setting up as of right now on Sunday and then should linger into the first part of the day on Monday. 70 at noon, sunny, breezy, very windy this morning. Winds will ease a little bit later on today and then 77 for high temperature. We make it up into the low, close to mid 80s tomorrow. Same thing Saturday, difference being the humidity and Sunday. Good chance of rain as of right now. 72, that's it. So it'd be nice to have a good soaking Sunday around here. Well, that's kind of what you were looking for, kind of space mm -hmm. out these, but have more frequent rain chances. And then another small chance right now of rain next Wednesday. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see 70s on Sunday. Yes, especially because it's going to be humid and hot Saturday. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mike. 524, about 60 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, the cast of Glee reuniting, plus fans of the Saw franchise would be able to get their fright on sooner than expected.
There are finally a lot of new movies and shows coming to the big and small screens, including one that promises to be an emotional class reunion. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The cast of Glee is reuniting for the 32nd annual GLAAD Media Awards. More than a dozen cast members will appear in the virtual ceremony, honoring their late castmate, Naya Rivera, and LGBTQ plus teens. Demi Lovato will introduce the cast. The awards are April 8th on GLAAD's YouTube channel and Hulu. Saw fans can get their fright on sooner than expected. Lionsgate has moved up the release of Spiral from the Book of Saw to May 14th. The suspense thriller starring Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson had been scheduled to open May 21st. Coach Marvin Korn is going from the NCAA to some fancy high school. Here's your first look at John Stamos and Yvette Nicole Brown in Big Shot, about a temperamental basketball coach tossed from the college ranks who lands in an elite girls prep school where the players have issues of their own. The comedy drama series with a hint of Hoosiers debuts on Disney Plus April 16th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I watched Operation Varsity Blues about the college admissions scandal on Netflix last night. I heard that was interesting. It's pretty good. It's shot like a feature film, but it's still a documentary. Yeah. Matthew Modine plays Rick Singer, the, the main oh. character. Oh, wow, my husband saw it. I haven't seen it yet. Check it out. 528, about 60 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA after the deadly shooting in Boulder, lawmakers in Washington are once again ramping up talks about gun reform as the gun industry preps for a surge in sales. Are you missing the nightlife? Miller Lite trying to help with a new line of candles that will have you reminiscing about game day and beer gardens. Details just ahead. Hi, happy Thursday. It is March 25th. If you're wondering about overnight showers and storms, yes, we did have some, but Mike has some good news this morning. Yeah, a lot of folks uh, now here in town, we weren't really awakened by any thunderstorms, but uh, folks in the hill country, yeah, it was getting pretty rough there for a while with some of the uh, severe storms, high winds, and some large hail. As a matter of fact, uh, up to the northeast of Austin, there was just a report of uh, egg-sized hail up there, but all that is continuing to work its way up to the northeast. We still have some rain around here, obviously, and uh, temperatures have continued to drop down. We were in the upper 60s just about uh, four or five hours ago. Now at 59, dew point has dropped down as well. And the wind, yeah, you can see this. And Sam's going to be showing that some of the trans guide cameras are just getting bounced all over the place with the windy conditions out there. The rain is continuing, but and as you can see, definitely coming to an end. There's a lot of it up around uh, New Braunfels heading in towards San Marcos. We do still have some of these showers in town, maybe a little straggler there off to the uh, west, but it will continue to work its way from east, or excuse me, from west to east and end. And there's a few more showers up there on uh, 281 up by uh, 1604. And then, like I said, a lot more going up there, and, uh, even around Canyon Lake and still some fairly uh, decent downpours. But we're not even seeing any lightning uh, that's being detected on radar as of right now. 40s now in the hill country as far as dew points, but then look at Pleasanton 65 still. We're at uh, 53. That's the moist air that we were in, but the dry air will continue to come in here riding in on these northwesterly winds gusting uh, 31 at Castroville, 32 Hondo 28 at Randolph. It's going to be windier in the first portion of the day and then the wind is going to be settling down. Still a breeze today. Moderate mold. Be interesting to see what happens with that with the rain that we've had overnight when the updated count comes out about uh, 7, 730. Everything else is on the light side. And yesterday we did have some heavy dust. Now hopefully that gets washed out of the air as well. 78 noon, 77 for a high temperature today. Good looking day, low humidity. Nice tomorrow, although at about 5, 6, 7 degrees to that number. Weekend, going to be interesting. Hot and humid and then cooler and wet. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Samuel King, a lot of cameras getting uh, shaken up out there. Yeah, we're getting some uh, windy conditions out there and some wet conditions like I 10 at the Y. Uh, just one of the uh, many areas seeing some uh, slick roadways and I 10 at Frio as well. So if you are someone who is heading out in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so, you know, the rain is moving out, as Mike mentioned. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. The roads are going to be wet for a little bit after that. Uh, looking at some of the travel time looking fairly normal 25 minutes coming in from Bernie uh, to downtown on I-10 28 minutes on 281 from Belverde to downtown 26 minutes from New Braunfels to downtown San Antonio this morning taking a look uh, at the maps here we did have 
bit of a slowdown here on the uh, southwest side, far southwest Bear County there near uh, 1604 and 35, uh, which is a pretty, uh, fairly uh, typical uh, for that area, especially when you have some uh, rain uh, like this, but that's just something to watch out for if you're uh, in this area. As you can see here, uh, rain covering most of uh, the area in terms of the roads immediately here in San Antonio. And again, that's probably going to continue uh, for a little bit here. Uh, so keep in mind, take it, take it easy on the road, slow down just a little bit so everyone can get home safely. Again, here's a look at Transguide. Uh, this is down 37 on the southeast side, 90 at General McMullen. Uh, things looking okay. Not many crashes or any crashes reported at the moment, but we'll keep an eye on things. Guys, over to you. Today in Colorado, the man police say opened fire at a grocery store in Boulder, killing 10 people, will make his first court appearance. As officials continue to investigate what happened, some lawmakers are calling for changes to gun laws. And as CNN's Brent Conway reports, that has the gun industry prepping for a surge in sales. As a community mourns and investigators work to piece together what happened at this grocery store in Boulder, Colorado, President Joe Biden is pushing Congress to do something and pass what he calls common sense gun legislation. We have to act to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future. But as it always has been, there's a sharp divide when it comes to legislation aimed at gun control. We can't allow this to become normal. And it's not just the mass shootings, it's the daily shooting. And I think we just have to keep pushing the members of Congress who are unwilling to support it because this matters. The weight of legislation should be against the criminals, not against law-abiding citizens. There are bad people who do bad things and we need a way to protect ourselves. With Congress unlikely to move quickly on gun legislation, the White House is weighing whether to issue a number of gun safety measures through executive action though exactly what those would be is still unclear. It's not just about uh, addressing uh, gun access, that's important, uh, and obviously there's legislation that's under consideration on background checks. It's also about addressing community violence. Either way, through legislation or executive action, talk of stricter gun regulations has the gun industry prepping for a surge in sales. I'm Britt Conway reporting. A group of Democratic lawmakers is asking President Joe Biden to issue a waiver to make COVID-19 vaccinations mandatory for members of the U.S. military. A request was made in a letter signed by seven members of Congress. There's no response yet from the White House. Right now, the Defense Department cannot make vaccinations mandatory because the Food and Drug Administration has only authorized them for emergency use. The rule could be bypassed by a waiver from the commander in chief. And out of this world experience for the SpaceX program, the agency launched another batch of satellites from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station yesterday. The 60 Starlink satellites add to the cluster already in orbit, which will eventually be used to provide high speed Internet across the globe. This was the sixth launch for the Falcon 9 first stage booster. It later returned safely to a drone ship. The launch comes on the 15th anniversary of SpaceX's debut launch. That one for the first Falcon 1 rocket was not successful. That's the first time I've heard the Cape referred to as Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Me too. I was That's kind of cool. That. Yeah. 537, about 60 degrees. And still ahead, a company has developed a new bike tire that never goes flat thanks to some out of this world technology. And next, as many students are still learning from home, important warning signs your child may be getting bullied online. And taking a look outside, live cam as far as like the severe weather in our immediate area seems to be okay but there are still showers here and there so be careful if you head out on the roadways we'll be right back good morning and welcome back by 40 throughout the pandemic many children have spent more time on devices either for virtual school or social activities or while parents are working but all that screen time also increases the risk for cyberbullying. So how do you know if it's something your child is dealing with? Here's Ursula Perry with some warning signs. There are some warning signs as to whether your child is facing cyberbullying online and ways to prevent it in the future. From virtual learning to social media, children and teens are surrounded by technology, especially during the pandemic. And it's not always a good thing. 
there's no escape from cyberbullying because it follows you home because your technology follows you home. Angie Boyd with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Stephanie V. Blank Center for Safe and Healthy Children says cyberbullying is using any electronic means to intimidate, harass, threaten or demean a person. Children have higher levels of anxiety, higher levels of depression as a result of dealing with cyberbullying, which can then have an impact on their behaviors as they continue to age. There are cyberbullying signs to spot. Your child may not be using their devices much or stop going to the same apps. They may try to hide the screen when an adult is around or avoid social situations with certain friend groups. Those are red flags that you want to follow up on with your child. Boy says to set technology rules for how long and when they're allowed to be on. And her biggest advice? Have open conversations with your child. You want to know where they're going online. Who are they talking to? What apps are they using? Uh, you want to have their usernames and passwords and make sure that you're checking in on them pretty routinely. If you want to stay up to date with what your child is doing online, then you're going to have to get up to date with technology. Find out what apps they're using and then learn how to use those apps. That way, you'll know what your kid is up to. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. 542, we're at 59 degrees. And coming up next, Hal Miller Light wants to help you recapture the nightlife experience with a new line of candles. According to the latest data from Wells Fargo, Amazon.com is the number one seller of clothes in the United States. And this comes as the e-commerce giant makes even further gains during the COVID-19 pandemic. As Massey explains, during the pandemic, Amazon sold billions of dollars worth of clothing. Wells Fargo estimates that U.S. sales of clothing and shoes on Amazon, including third-party sellers, grew 15% in 2020. To put in that perspective, that reached $41 billion. In terms of ranking, that total is about 20 to 25% more than Walmart. Walmart came in second place. Walmart announced this week that it has hired American fashion designer Brandon Maxwell as creative director of two of its private label brands. Only six other companies in the United States sells $10 billion worth of clothing or more. TJ Maxx, Macy's, Target, Gap, its parent company to namesake brand Banana Republic. We also have Old Navy, Athleta, and Ross stores. Back to Amazon though. There are reasons why they are number one. In fact, some brands have actually partnered with Amazon in order to take advantage of the company's reach. A lot of vendors are partnering with Amazon to establish a comprehensive brand presentation on their site with assortments that minimally compete with existing channels. And it seems like they are far from done. Wells Fargo's forecasts have sales of clothing and shoes on Amazon to surpass $45 billion in 2021. A modest, modest. 10% gain. Guys, back to you. In your morning consumer headlines, Google is offering a hand for students trying to tackle homework. The tech giant is unveiling five search tools aimed toward helping with the learning process. They include an interactive feature with nearly a million practice problems in math, chemistry, and physics. Users also have access to educational overviews and videos. A high-tech company says one day cyclists won't have to worry about flat tires anymore. The smart tire company showing off its metal tire. These tires do not need air to stay filled and can be used on roads, gravel, or mountains, the tires use an elastic memory alloy that holds its initial shape. They work like the tires roaming around Mars on NASA's Curiosity rover. The tires could be available for the cycling community in early 2022. It's not clear yet how much they'll cost. And are you missing the nightlife scene? Well, Miller Lite wants to help you recapture the experience with candles. The beer brand is releasing three limited edition candles with distinct smells reminiscent of a night out. The collection includes candles that smell like a dive bar, game day, and a beer garden. And in case you forgot what those crowded haunts smell like, here's a reminder. Dive bars bring together musk, tobacco, and pine, while a beer garden is more earthy with notes of moss and wood, pretzel, and sunburn. What? <laughs> what moss, wood, pretzel, and sunburn? Yeah, so game day, oh, this is my favorite, okay. is the best of tailgating, peanut, and jalapeno to have you savoring fan favorite snacks. Now the candles, are for sale across North America. I gotta admit, my mouth's watering a little bit. Maybe it was the, the peanuts, I'm not sure, but musk, tobacco, pine, and wait, moss, wood, pretzel, and sunburn. Yes, uh, sunburn. What, 
What a sunburn. I guess. Smells. Maybe maybe it's the, the aloe green. that you put on after or something like mm. that. Mm. I mean, because the, the smell of like copper tone is pretty good, but what they have on like <laughs> old fraternity <laughs> How about like old fraternity house, you know? <laughs> old fraternity spills. house? That's not a good no. smell, Mike. No, uh, none of these uh, are, really. <laughs> just about tin tail right now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel. I'm not missing going out that much that I need to have the smell in my house. Right, exactly. <laughs> anyway. Uh, some wet roads still remaining out there for Tin and Perrin Vital, uh, for example, but uh, things seem to be improving in terms of, of the wet roadways, but we still have uh, some wind gusts out there, too. I'm sure Mike's going to talk more about that in a moment. Let's uh, take a look uh, at uh, the maps here, see if we have any other issues on the roadways, and uh, we don't. Looks like uh, everything is fine except for uh, the wet roads. No crashes uh, reported. We hope that uh, continues, but we know uh, things get a little busier as the morning uh, wears on. Take a look at 410 on the north side. We saw uh, some uh, Transguy cameras there, but looking fairly normal, eight to nine minutes uh, right now. But again, watch out for uh, the wet roadways uh, out there this morning. As you can see, again, 410 uh, pair and vital traffic uh, building a little bit, but still flowing well, guys. Thank you, Sammy. Right. We can imagine a more pleasant floral fra fragrance yes. now. Yeah, I, I prefer say, yeah. that. You walk into Sam's house. Sam, did you have a rough night last night? No, that's just my new candle. <laughs> <laughs> my Miller Lite collection. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it smells like spilled beer. Uh, yeah, beautiful. You know, we always talk about the blue bonnets, but look at the poppies down there in Castroville, or over there in Castroville, I should say. Absolutely gorgeous, that vivid red color. Thank you very much for that, and hopefully a lot of the wildflowers in your lawns are getting some decent rain, and we, you know, kind of a little bit on the lighter side this morning, if you will, because all there's nothing uh, bad out there as far as any severe weather right now. Yes, we do have some rain to deal with. The roads are wet, as Sam was just talking about, and uh, everything is pretty much out of the picture right now. A few leftover showers up around, say, uh, Canyon Lake moving in towards San Marcos, but nothing is showing up here in town right now. Even Still uh, one or two leftover little showers here in Castroville, so there might be you know, here and there, but for the most part, all of the rain has now uh, come to an end and all that is going to continue to work its way up there to the uh, north of us. And here's a good look at the uh, water vapor imagery. First of all, watch how this moisture there really deepens as those thunderstorms blew up in parts of the hill country. And yes, there was some severe weather in parts of the hill country in the overnight hours and earlier this morning. Uh, golf ball size hail winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. The latest uh, severe thunderstorm warnings did expire about uh, a little bit before three o'clock this morning. That was a bandera and there were also there were some for uh, Real County, but those were allowed to expire. Bandera, as well as uh, portions of Kendall and Kerr counties, had some severe weather earlier this morning. Uh, here's what's showing up today. Nothing. Once we get rid of the rain, things are going to clear out nicely. A lot of sunshine today, a lot of sunshine tomorrow. Then we get the clouds moving back in here. The humidity is going to come back in pretty quickly tomorrow night into Saturday. Maybe some sprinkles in the morning, and we'll keep some clouds around throughout the day. And then Sunday, overnight Saturday into Sunday, the next moves through and this is right now shaping up to be now it doesn't mean it's going to be raining everywhere and constantly but right now that's shaping up to be a pretty decent rain event on Sunday and that'll go into Sunday evening and then uh, lingering into Monday morning then we should be clearing out in behind that so here's the uh, first little wave in the atmosphere that moved on through now we kind of clear out just a little bit Tomorrow, beautiful again, but the humidity is going to come in here fairly quickly, and the next wave is going to come in here, and that's going to be Saturday into Sunday. And then behind that, we've got some nice weather. So nice to see some rain chances every couple of days. The nice thing about Sunday's uh, rain event, it does not uh, is not shaping up to be any sort of a, a severe event as of right now. 70 today at noon. Sunny skies, breezy conditions, windier this morning. Wind is going to ease a little bit later on today. And then 77 high temperature, right around the average normal high temperature. Tomorrow, nice uh, pleasant start and then big warm up. We gain about 30, 35 degrees throughout much of the area tomorrow and then 83 for a high temperature, low humidity. Humidity comes back in here Saturday. Saturday's going to be pretty warm and humid, cloudy skies, rain on Sunday and only low 70s on Sunday. I like the spring tie. Uh, very oh, Easter. -ish. Yeah, it's appropriate. That's yeah. coming up next weekend. Yeah, week, yeah. week from Sunday. That's right. Passover starts Saturday night, Palm Sunday this Sunday and then Easter weekend. There we go. You're ready. 553, about 59 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, two, six, fireball three, daily four, one, five, four, one, fireball nine. Cash five numbers nine, 11, 14, 23, 27. Lotto Texas, 621, 27, 33, 37, 51. And Powerball, 
4, 9, 17, 27, 38, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. San Antonio Books Festival has announced its 2021 author lineup and event schedule, which includes nearly 200 local, regional, and national authors. This year, due to the pandemic, the festival is entirely online, April 9th through the 11th. It's free, it's family friendly, and for more information, as always, go to ksatcommunity.com. Glad you're with us on this Thursday morning. Longhorns and Mustangs are integral to the history of Texas, but their origin story is not often told. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll learn about this unique part of history in today's Tejano Moments story. Checking Transguide around town, we had some rain in the area. Most of that appears to be moving out. The roads in, in, in also appear to be drying as uh, conditions improve. Mike said a front has moved through. We'll check on weather and traffic next. The ongoing effort to get thousands vaccinated here in the Alamo City continues. Good morning, I'm Stephen Cavazos. Coming up this morning on GMSA, how you can schedule your appointment. A worrying uptick in new coronavirus cases while vaccinations are also ramping up. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are at about 57 degrees right now, even though it says 59, a little cool down after some showers, but uh, there are showers here and there, so be careful when you head out on the roadway. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. Time to rise and shine. It is Thursday, March 25th. Thanks for joining us, and you have a little bit of time to get that extra cup of coffee, especially if you didn't sleep through some of the rain last night. We had some showers and storms, but most of those, as Mike is about to tell you, have started to move out of the area. Yeah, uh, as you can see, evident behind me uh, over there by the airport, yeah, the roads are wet, but no rain is showing up right now. Parts of the hill country overnight, you uh, may have been awakened by some of those storms, which did become severe. We had some high winds as well as some uh, fairly large hail in parts of the hill country, but after about 2.30 or so, so everything pretty much settled down. The atmosphere really got really kind of stabilized and uh, we didn't have anything after that. And right now we're at 57. 50 is the dew point. That's been uh, continuing to drop down. It's dropped about 15, 16, 70 degrees since that front moved through. Winds, sustained winds at 20 miles per hour out there at the airport. And again, with the exception of, I mean, a couple of little sprinkles now up around Canyon Lake and then paralleling 35 in toward Austin, we still have some uh, decent rain. And actually earlier this morning, that cell right there as it goes through produced egg sized hail. That was a report just about an hour or so ago. But again, here in town, just leftover wet roads, one or two uh, leftover sprinkles. And that's pretty much about it. And also, Watch this line right here work on through. That's the front that came in here. And so that has been pulling in drier air, cooler air, and windy conditions. Winds 25 miles per hour, Port SA 26 Randolph, and then the gusts on top 29 at New Braunfels, gusting to 43 right now. Winds have definitely picked up 38 mile per hour winds at the airport. So definitely hang on to the steering wheel with both hands this morning. And then the wind is going to be easing up a little bit. We do have moderate mold. That was, was yesterday's count. Everything else is on the light side. Hopefully some of the dust got washed out of the atmosphere with some of the rain that we had. Temperatures may drop down another couple of degrees. Very windy this morning. Gusty winds. Wind is going to ease up a little bit and we're going to be clearing out quite nicely throughout the day. We'll make it up to 70 today at noon and top off right around the upper 70s, close to a uh, an average normal temperature, if you will. Good looking day today. Good looking day tomorrow. Warmer tomorrow than the humidity returns, but we have another front and another good rain chance coming in here later on in the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. So we got some wet roads and windy conditions. Any problems? No uh, real problems uh, at the moment, Mike. As we look at Transcott I-10 at the Y. Traffic uh, flowing uh, well uh, this morning. I-10 at Frio as well. We were uh, sort of concerned uh, about that, and we did have a crash earlier this morning on the north side, but that has uh, long cleared. Uh, let's take a look at, at the maps. 
this morning so we can get a further look at what's uh, going on uh, in the area. Uh, Mike was mentioning that even though most of the showers are moving out, we're still going to see some wet roads. And that's what this uh, tool is indicating here. The green means there's some uh, moisture on the road. So uh, something to keep in mind. Make sure you watch your, your speed this morning as you're heading out. Uh, looking across the area at the travel times, 26 minutes coming in on 35 from New Braunfels, half an hour coming in on I-10 from Bernie, uh, from uh, Seguin, excuse me, 25 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie, 19 minutes on 90 from Castroville. So those traffic times at the moment looking fairly normal. And again, here's a look at Transguide I-10 at uh, 35, uh, 410 at Perrin Vital. Traffic flowing well, we'll keep an eye on it. Mark Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, one bullet has put two people in the hospital. San Antonio police are calling what happened in the 100 block of Del Mar an accident. They say a man told them he was cleaning a handgun inside his apartment when it discharged around 430 this morning. A bullet went through his arm and hit his girlfriend in the stomach. Both were rushed to the hospital. Police say a teenage girl who was also in the home was not hurt. A man is in the hospital this morning after police say his finger was cut off. They say it happened at a homeless camp in the woods near Pearsall Park around one this morning. They say an argument started and led to someone pulling out a machete and cutting off the man's finger. Police say the man called for help near Old Pearsall Road and Benita Base Road. They're still trying to learn details about that argument. To the pandemic, local health officials are reporting 132 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven-day moving average is now at 160 cases per day. He says hospitalizations are decreasing slightly. 183 people currently need medical attention in Bear County. And starting next week, the daily briefings will only take place on Mondays and Thursdays. Vaccination efforts ramping up here in the Alamo City. Starting today, Metro Health will make 30,000 vaccine appointments available. Our Stephen Cavazos is live near downtown this morning. And what do people need to know about this round of vaccines, Stephen? Good morning, Mark. Well, this is going to be for the first round of the Pfizer vaccine. Now, this people that make those appointments today, they'll be scheduled to receive those vaccines as early as April 6th through May 1st at the Alamo Dome. Now, residents can start registering today for an appointment online at Metro Health's website starting at 7 this evening. And for those without Internet access, they can call 311 Customer Service COVID-19 hotline from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on weekends. For those looking to be notified when other appointments will be available at other locations, they can text vaccine to 55000. They will receive a text notifying them of those locations. But keep in mind, this will not register you or put you on a waiting list, but again, simply notify you when appointments are available. Now, those notifications will be for the Alamo Dome, Wonderland of the Americas, which are operated by University Health, UT Health, and WellMed. Now, University Health has also created an online registration process for people 80 and and older who want to get the vaccine. This was created to actually help prioritize those populations to get the vaccine as the state plans to expand the eligibility starting next week. Now, for those people that are in that age group, they can simply enter their information online and someone from University Health will contact them later on to verify that that registry opens up later today. You can go to our website at ksat.com for more information. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. More than 30 million Americans have now been infected with COVID-19 since the pandemic began. Meanwhile, vaccinations continue to increase across the country. 84 million people now have received at least one shot, but health experts say it's still not enough for restrictions to be lifted. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. A good morning. While more Americans are being vaccinated every day, the White House COVID team believes we need much higher numbers in order for those restrictions to be safely lifted. Progress in the fight against COVID-19, but health experts worry some may be taking a victory lap before the battle is won. This takes one weekend getting nice weather and relaxing. Um, following those guidelines and, and we end up sliding backwards. Across the country, increasing red flags. The U.S. still averaging about 55,000 new cases a day. In just the past seven days, at least 16 states seeing new infections grow by 10 percent. We are at the corner. Whether or not we're going to be turning that corner still remains to be seen. Success still within reach as vaccine distribution ramps up. The Biden administration shipping more than 27 million doses this week. AstraZeneca still hoping to add its vaccine to the stock after the company updated its efficacy data, showing their vaccine is 76% effective against symptomatic COVID. 
Meantime, expanding eligibility. 28 states in Washington, D.C., allowing anyone over the age of 16 to get the jab by May 1st. The Ad Council just launched a nationwide vaccination campaign targeting conservatives and sports fans, suggesting that normalcy is around the corner if everyone can do their part. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Back here at home, Joint Base San Antonio Lackland will temporarily house unaccompanied minors who have crossed the southern U.S. border. The Department of Defense approved the request from Health and Human Services last night. A vacant dormitory on base will be used to house the children. While the military is providing a place to stay, it will be up to Health and Human Services to make sure the children are taken care of. Last time JBSA Lackland was used to house unaccompanied minors was in 2014. Now, when it comes to possibly using Freeman Coliseum as well, Bear County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says discussions are ongoing. I think there's discussion of potentially housing up to 2100 is the number I heard um, at Freeman. Again, this is a, a humanitarian effort. Again, no final decision has been made on Freeman Coliseum yet, but JBSA Lackland here in San Antonio will be used as a temporary shelter. No word on when the children are expected to arrive. And she claims she's the victim of a good old boy system, but others say ex-constable Michelle Barrientes Vela abused her authority and power. Those allegations were uncovered by the case at 12 defenders. That's a topic of a one hour special called Downfall. That's airing today at 9 p.m. For nearly three years, investigative reporter Dylan Collier revealed problem after problem at Precinct 2, finally leading to a law enforcement investigation and criminal charges filed against the controversial constable. Do you regret your treatment of Leo Moreno and Chris De La Serta? They are named in the indictments. The yellow journalism that has been trained out here against me is again, with this individual standing right here today. He has alleged lots of allegations Even against after your me. Indictment, you're still throw yes, that out I am. Uh, yes. Okay. And so, if anybody should be apologizing to the community, it's Mr. Dylan Collar, it is you. Okay. And you will learn how it all happened along with previously unseen exclusive video in this case at 12 special program that's downfall today at 9 p.m. 610 58 degrees and Kawhi Leonard got the best of the Spurs yet again. We're going to hear the reactions to last night's loss against the Clippers. March Madness is in full swing and many have already had their back brackets busted, but research shows it can also bust the bottom line for some employers. After the break, how much money companies money lose during the basketball tournament? And taking a look outside with live cam, it's actually 57 degrees right now, even though your screen says 58. It's going to be a nice day, though, after all this rain clears out. That's what Mike says. We're going to check with him later on. Just about 6.15, we're right in the middle of March Madness, and as you can imagine, both the men and women's tournaments can cause some problems for employers when it comes to people watching games during working hours. But should employers really be concerned, and how much productivity are they missing out on? Our Stephen Cavazos explains. This is a time of year many look forward to, March Madness. It's a time for close calls, busted brackets, and big, memorable moments in college basketball. But all that can come at a price, especially for your employer. According to Challenger Gray and Christmas Inc., a work outplacement firm, U.S. employers can lose around an average of $13.3 billion in productivity during the tournament. That is based on an average hourly earning of $27 an hour for all employees on private non-farm payrolls. The firm also estimated that each hour spent on games at work can cost employers about $2.1 billion. Those numbers include time spent actually watching the games, filling out brackets, and just talking in general about the game to co-workers. During the study, the research found nearly half of all works, about 75 million people would spend around six hours of work time on March Madness activities throughout the tournament. And of course, this year, people are working from home and combining their work time with March Madness time even more. But the Challenger firm is encouraging companies to embrace this, and instead of prohibiting employees from watching it, they could turn it into a bonding experience for their team by doing an office pool or hosting a viewing party on Zoom. They say this could also be a great stress reliever considering everything people have been going through with a pandemic and it can pay off in the long run. A number of studies show happy employees not only work more quickly, but also perform better than workers who are not happy. Stephen Cavasso's case at 12 News. 
Right now, 616 on your Thursday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King, who is not checking out the games right now, right? No, no. I, I was doing that yesterday, and I was all prepared to brag on my Northwestern Wildcats, but Louisville pulled it out. They are heading to the Sweet 16, and my purple is packed up. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> but uh, anyway, still proud of that team. Still proud of all the women's teams, the ones who are remaining here in San Antonio. We have some games this weekend here on KSAT 12. Uh, traffic, though, looking uh, fine uh, this morning, and the travel time is looking fine, too. 29 minutes coming in from, from the Pleasanton area on 37, 19 minutes coming in from Castroville, and 17 minutes from Lytle to downtown San Antonio. Uh, let's take a quick look uh, at the maps here, and we're seeing still some indications of what roads but as Mike is going to tell you in a moment the rain is uh, moving out of here pretty quickly so we hope these conditions improve as well and here again is Transguide I-10 at 35 flowing well 410 at Perrin Vital things looking uh, fairly good out there we'll keep an eye on it though guys Thank you, Samuel. Let's roll that big, beautiful yellow school bus, Mike oster -Hage. Yeah. All right, and as you are hitting the roads this morning, just kind of take it easy because, uh, like Sam was talking about, the roads are still wet, but again, most of the rain is pretty much out of here, and it will continue to end, and breezy conditions are just downright windy conditions out there. Wind out of the northwest, 15, 25 miles per hour, and we got some really good wind gusts going on. 79 today after school, right around the upper 70s, then later on today. Beautiful picture. This was from uh, yesterday, and uh, this evening, we should have a spectacular sunrise. I don't even think we'll have any of those uh, little high wispy clouds hanging around there, but thank you, Mr. Childers. You're going to send in some great looking pictures. All right, here's what it looks like um, out there by the airport right now. Again, the rain has ended, roads still wet. We still have a couple of showers that are showing up, but again, most everything is out of here now. Right around two, about uh, three, four hours ago, four or five hours ago, we did have some severe storms still in portions of the hill country, but all those, uh, the, the atmosphere really kind of stabilized. There were some other factors that came into play and sort of cut off the, uh, the the severe weather, although we did have some high winds as well as uh, large hail that prompted severe thunderstorm warnings in parts of the hill country. Nothing is showing up here in town. Maybe a little leftover sprinkle, and that'll be about it. Now, as far as the humidity, we have front move on through here, and if you recall, just I believe it was the last weather cast uh, about 15, 20 minutes ago, the dew points are still up in the 60s in Pleasanton, but the dry air has moved on in. 40s, 50s now, much more pleasant out there. This is the air that uh, that we were in just earlier this morning, a couple of hours ago, with those dew points up in the 60s, but with that dry air coming on in here and those windy conditions that have been gusting about uh, 35, close to 40 miles per hour in some cases. Now, dry air is going to stay in place today as well as tomorrow. Humidity comes back in here pretty quickly tomorrow night into Saturday. Still very warm, so it's going to be a sultry Saturday. Then we have another front coming on through, and that's going to knock the humidity on out of here. It'll come back by Wednesday, but those two days where you get those dew points up in the 60s, well, at least on, on Sunday, I should say, after that, that's when we do have rain chances around here. So today, nothing is going on. Tomorrow, same thing. More humidity on Saturday, maybe some mist and a couple of light uh, sprinkly showers early on Saturday. Then we go into Saturday night and Sunday morning, and that's when the next front moves on through here. And again, we're still looking at uh, a fairly decent chance for some rain on Sunday. Not a severe weather event, just a rain event. So that's good news, and that's going to be throughout most of the day on Sunday and lingering into early Monday morning. 70, sunny skies, breezy conditions at noon, and still a breeze out there, not as windy this afternoon. 77 for a high temperature today. Tomorrow, we are going to see a coolish morning. Nice big warm-up throughout the day. We gained about close to 35 degrees throughout the course of the day. And then Saturday, Warm temperatures and a lot more humidity around here. Rain on Sunday and only 72 degrees. Big front moving on through. 73 on Monday, back to the 80s midweek. Oh, wow. Looking good I overall. Know. And and like you were saying, the goal was to kind of space out our rain chances. Mm -hmm. Not that we can control that. Right, but perfect scenario. You know, you get these fronts moving on through here and get some rain coming in every few days. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, we'll take that and the 72 degrees. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you. 620 about 58 degrees. And the Spurs will have another chance to beat the Clippers tonight after falling short last night. So we're going to have a preview of tonight's game after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA.
It's so good to see you guys. Yeah. Han, out here. Are we on yet? Oh. <laughs> I thought we were doing a Zoom thing. Confused? No. Maybe you just need a Snickers. Do lotion and jeans go together? A Nivea breathable experiment. Now they do. Moisturizes deeply with no sticky feel. The game-changing Nivea Breathable. We do it every night. Like clockwork. Do it. Run your dishwasher with Cascade Platinum and save water. Did you know certified dishwashers use less than four gallons per cycle while a running sink uses that every two minutes? So do it with Cascade, the surprising way to save water. Fight fleas and ticks with Seresto. Eight months continuous protection against fleas and ticks. It's effective, convenient. Seresto. Keep playing. More on Seresto.com. Six twenty-four. Spurs started a back-to-back -back series against the Clippers at the AT&T Center last night. Kawhi Leonard returned to SA for the first time this season after the Spurs beat LA in the Game One of the year. But if you're looking for a nice home win, you might want to look elsewhere. The Clippers jumped all over the Spurs early and took an early lead. They wouldn't lose that lead for the rest of the game. Clips pummeled the Spurs 134-101. Here's what Dejounte Murray had to say after the loss. You know we gotta figure out and adjust as players you know the coaches are going to help us and do their job but you know we're the ones out there uh you know at the end of the day we just you know got to go out and, and just play with each other and, and have fun and try to adjust to whatever they you know send our way spurs get a chance at redemption tonight in that second game of back-to-backs against the clippers tip off is set for 7 30 tonight at the at&t center you can watch it live on fox sports southwest and see like what we hope our highlights tomorrow right here on GMSA. Yes, we hope. Go Spurs, go. And the pandemic led to a unique event for the Brackenridge Park Conservancy. Take a look at this. Last night's promenade through the park took drivers through the park and included a performance by the Dirty River Jazz Band. Ticket holders were able to cruise down the historic Alpine Drive and low water crossing, which is not normally open to the public. It was created in about 1917, uh, and uh, the road follows the ridge of the old quarry. And so you can look down onto the Tea Garden, onto the Sunken Garden Theater, and you get a beautiful view of downtown San Antonio. And the event wasn't just for fun. It also served as a fundraiser to help maintain the park. I think I remember at Brackenridge when I was a kid, you used to be able to drive at that low water spot. It was oh, really? always cool to drive and, you know, kind of get through there and get the tires wet and and well yeah i mean but of course this is a controlled environment this mm -hmm. time it wasn't after a big rain right right yeah. again you don't <laughs> yes. normally get to do that yeah anymore. that's neat though yeah in the old days 626 about 59 degrees and becky hammond a trailblazer in the nba in our next half hour we will take a look at how her career started and the barriers she has broken with the spurs A man almost loses his finger following an argument at a homeless camp in Southwest Bear County. I'm Stephen Cavazos coming up this morning on GMSA, the latest on the ongoing investigation. Showers and storms were in the overnight forecast and it happened. We've got a few leftover sprinkles and a front has moved through. Mike has all the scoop coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is March 25th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Um, I, I was able to sleep through these storms this time around. What about you? Yeah, I, well, I raced to work to try to beat what was coming in to the western mm -hmm. part of the county, and I made it. Good. But just about the time those storm, we got to work, those storms started to kind of fall apart. Mike has yeah. all the details on that. You guys have been watching these all night long. Yeah, because the, the atmosphere is really setting up yesterday to be potentially severe. And we did have some severe storms in parts of the hill country, but uh, really didn't even have much of as far as any light lightning or thunder here in town uh, because everything did start to fall apart about uh, 2 two thirty this morning. But we did have those uh, high winds and hail, which prompted the severe weather out there to the west earlier this morning. Right now, uh, 410 may still be a little bit damp over there by the airport. We're looking off to the east. Still some leftover clouds, but no rain is showing up right here. And pretty much all of the rain is is gone. A couple of leftover showers well up to the uh, northeast, some in and around San Marcos. But uh, that's it. I mean, we don't even have anything. Now watch as this loops back on through and this line right 
there. That's the front that came through. That's what helped to prompt some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms. It is now bringing in cooler air. Temperatures have dropped a good 10 degrees at least from roughly 2, 2 o'clock this morning or so. And uh, 52 right now, Bernie at stage and low 50s in parts of the hill country. Very windy conditions. 20 mile per hour winds at the airport. 26 Randolph, 29 New Braunfels. These are the sustained winds. Gus, 43 New Braunfels, 38 at the airport. So definitely hang on to your hat this morning. But it's not going to be quite as windy later on this afternoon. Mold is moderate. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, that number does, given the fact we had some rain overnight. Hopefully the rain washed a lot of these allergens and that dust out of the air. The updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, 45 minutes to an hour or so. Rain will continue to end if it has not already. Maybe a leftover sprinkle. Breezy conditions. Then sunny upper 70s, low humidity. Really, really nice day today. A bit of a breeze out there. Not too bad, though. Sunny tomorrow, but it's going to be heating up up into the 80s. Then the humidity add to that and some clouds on Saturday. It's going to be sultry on Saturday. Another front's going to move through here, though. That's going to knock temperatures down and also give us another good rain chance coming in here by Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Samuel King, despite the wet roads, doesn't seem like it's been too awfully bad this morning. No, we had a crash earlier on 281-604 to north side, but that is uh, long since cleared. But we are seeing traffic starting to uh, build in the area. 281 at Hildebrand, uh, for example, so that's something uh, to watch out for. Let's take a look at the map, see if anything has uh, popped up here in the past uh, 15 minutes or so, and nothing really. Uh, things looking uh, relatively fine uh, on the roads uh, this morning. For now, we'll see if that continues as uh, the commute uh, goes on uh, throughout the morning. Uh, taking a look at a uh, 281 between 1604 and uh, downtown, 12 minutes each direction, so that is looking uh, fairly good again uh, for now. And looking across the area, 28 minutes coming all the way in from Belverde down to downtown on 281. 24 minutes on I-10 uh, from uh, Bernie. 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. 29 minutes on 37 from the Pleasanton area. And again, one last look at Transguide here. I-10 at the Y again. Traffic building, but at the moment, things looking fine. Guys, over to you. Very much, Sam. Your law enforcement agencies across the country are being warned about more potential acts of violence following that recent mass shooting in Boulder, Colorado. Meanwhile, the suspect from that shooting is due in court today. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Overnight, tributes across Boulder for the victims of Monday's supermarket shooting. From candlelight vigils to this procession for Officer Eric Talley, who died in the attack. And the city council holding a special meeting for the public to discuss their grief. Jenny was my student for three years. One speaker, a former high school teacher of one of the victims, Denny Stong, who worked at the supermarket. I thought about the Santa hat Denny wore every day of December, every year that I taught him. The speaker, he carried down the halls during passing periods and drive everyone crazy with his old soul or holiday music. Stong was one of 10 people killed Monday when police say a gunman opened fire in the King Supers parking lot before continuing his rampage inside. That 21 year old suspect is expected to make his first court appearance today. He's a U.S. citizen who came here from Syria when he was three. Sources say investigators are learning about his quick temper and possible psychiatric issues, but still no word on why the supermarket was targeted. This morning, survivors are grappling with a new reality. Darcy Lopez managed the cheese counter at the store. She crawled into a cabinet when the shooting started. I was cramped into a little ball. We were just waiting for a gunman to come around the corner and end it and shoot us. I just said to myself, if this is the world that I live in, just take me. Just take me. I, I don't want to live in this world. Meanwhile, 1,400 miles away, police arrested a man who walked into this grocery store in Atlanta Wednesday. They say he was carrying two long guns and three pistols. He was sent for a psychiatric evaluation. Law enforcement agencies across the country are being warned to take more precautions. A bulletin from counterterrorism experts with the NYPD is warning of more public acts of violence, adding malicious actors may view the loosening of restrictive COVID-19 related public health and safety measures as a chance to perpetrate violence. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. President Joe Biden will hold his first formal news conference of his presidency this afternoon. Comes more than two months after he was sworn in. It's later into the presidency than his 15 most recent predecessors. He's expected to highlight the meeting of his goal of administering 100 million doses of coronavirus vaccines in 100 days and the passage of the pandemic relief bill. He will likely face questions on gun control and immigration as well. You can watch it live 
on KSAT 12 News at Noon. A new AstraZeneca report has updated the data on how well its coronavirus vaccine works. The company now says its vaccine is 76% effective in preventing symptomatic disease instead of 79% effective. AstraZeneca says its vaccine is 85% effective in preventing symptoms in volunteers 65 and older. On Tuesday, an independent review board said it thought some of the data included in AstraZeneca's study was outdated, causing the company to re-examine its findings. Well, we are celebrating Women's History Month by taking a closer look at a local trailblazer in the world of professional sports. Becky Hammond has broken barriers in the NBA, and RJ Marcus tells us more about Hammond's drive to succeed before she worked her way up the coaching ranks. Years before Becky Hammond became a pioneer in pro basketball, she had already laid the foundation for her success with a work ethic that was unmatched. I spoke to her former college coach, Tom Collin, to find out what makes Coach Hammond such a groundbreaking force. One of the reasons why I decided to take the job was because I was going to inherit Becky Hammond. Her maturity level was, was beyond her years. You know, she was raised in an awesome household. Uh, her mom and dad taught her to hunt and fish and go fend for herself. Hammond was born and raised in South Dakota. She was the best player in the state, but was not highly recruited coming out of high school. She landed at Colorado State and made an immediate impact. It was it was their confidence, you know, and, and, and her fearlessness. You know, she believed in herself and, and she was one of those kids that got stronger as the game went on. Hammond led the Rams to the Sweet 16 in 1999. It was their best season in program history, but despite being named a college All-American, she was not drafted by a WNBA team. Coach Collin remembers calling coaches and several general managers imploring them to take a chance on Hammond. New York finally answered the call, but Collin was not sure it was the best fit. Hammond became an all-star player for the Liberty. She was traded to the San Antonio Stars in 2007, and two years later led the Stars to the WNBA Finals. After multiple All-Pro seasons, Hammond retired in 2014. Months later, she made history by becoming the first full-time female assistant coach in NBA history with the San Antonio Spurs. So she, she's always had that leadership, and I don't think, I, if, if she got into coaching, I don't think there was any doubt in my mind that, uh, that, that she would be successful at it. Tomorrow, we'll hear more from the Spurs players and coaches about Becky Hammond and also go back to the moment earlier this season when she once again made history. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Going to be so awesome to see her as an NBA head coach one day. Yeah, very, very cool. Hopefully sooner than later. Right now, 639, we're at about 59 degrees. Longhorns and Mustangs are integral to the history of Texas, but the origin story is not often told. We will learn more in today's Tejano Moments story after the break. This week in our Tejano Moment series, we're diving a little deeper into the history behind Longhorns and Mustangs. It's a history not often told in a classroom, but one that is important to the roots of the first Tejano ranches. Our Eric Hernandez has the details. Mustangs and Longhorns are very common in Texas, but they've been around a lot longer than the state itself. In fact, their history dates back to the six and seven hundreds when the Moors from North Africa occupied Old Spain. Over a 700 year period, not only did the Moors bring their religion, uh, their institutions, their government, etc., they also brought their agricultural practices and that led to bringing their uh, cattle strains uh, to Old Spain. Expeditions to the New World by Columbus and other explorers would bring Longhorns and Mustangs. And after Hernán Cortés caused the downfall of the Aztec Empire in Mexico in 1521, the livestock was then brought there. The Spanish are bringing their, the Spanish Mustangs, if you will, uh, just as they're bringing the Spanish Longhorns with them. So they're in tandem. The Spanish explorers cannot operate without their horses. Uh, and, and nor can they operate without the beef. As the area of Texas is being explored in the late 1600s, it is then that the practice known as seed stock began to provide future development of horses and longhorns. All of this leading up to the creation of the first Tejano Ranches by 1741. We're real proud and pleased of the things that our ancestors accomplished and developed and, 
and many times the first, the first ranches, the first longhorns that they brought for Spanish uh, horses and so forth. There are still remnants of those first Tejano ranches around, the closest being Rancho de las Cabras in Wilson County that at one point had over a thousand head of cattle and over 30 horses. For more on Tejano history, just visit our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Right now it is 645 and wait to see this KSAT Connect picture of Mike Scott for you coming up. All right, but for now, let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Thank you, Stephanie and Mark. I think still looking uh, pretty good on the roads, despite the fact that traffic uh, is starting to build out there. This is a uh, train sky to I-10 at uh, 35. Uh, here is a look at the maps around San Antonio. That looks uh, fairly good, but we still uh, had a little bit of a delay here on the northwest side. This is a uh, Bandera Loop 1604. We were down to 15, uh, 20 miles per hour just a second ago, so that is improving as you head north on Bandera Road. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, 16. 04 itself, uh, 12 minutes between 281 and Bandera, 12 minutes going the other way too. We know that can tend to back up here, especially as we approach a 730, 8 o'clock. So again, we'll keep an eye on that as well. Again, this is a trans guide I-10 and Freo. You see the cars uh, moving well, and that's what we like to see this morning, guys. This is what Mark was talking about. Very nice. Oh, I'm going to nominate for picture of the year so far. Yeah, we used Beautiful. to have a redbud tree in our backyard when I was growing up. And, and this time of year when it would bloom, it was gorgeous out there. And then you got the two monarch butterflies in there. That is fantastic. Yeah, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, uh, maybe still some damp spots in the roads there. No rain is showing up right now. Going back in time to uh, right after uh, midnight this morning. Now, obviously nothing is showing up on radar right now, but there were all of these severe storms, and it was that line that pretty much traversed straight west to east, and it was high winds and some large hail that uh, were the, the biggest threats and did reach uh, severe criteria. And then it was about 2.30 when the last severe thunderstorm warning was allowed to expire and everything just really, really settled down. And as of right now, there is nothing showing up on radar. Maybe a leftover little sprinkle here and there. 57 degrees out at the airport, low 50s in parts of the hill country. The big story though right now, the windy conditions pulling in drier air, but uh, 24 mile per hour winds, Port SA, 29 New Braunfels. And again, it's been gusting up to about uh, 43 in New Braunfels just in roughly the past half hour. And it's going to stay very windy all morning long. And then the wind is going to sort of ease up a little bit later on today. Nothing going on today. Nothing going on tomorrow. Just a lot of sunshine. It is going to be warmer tomorrow. Upper 70s today at about Oh gosh, of five, six, seven degrees to that tomorrow. So we're looking at low to mid 80s tomorrow, which means upper 80s and close to 90 down along the Rio Grande Valley off to the south and west. And then Saturday, we'll have a couple of sprinkly showers in the morning. That's because the humidity is going to come back in here. So it's going to be hot and humid on Saturday. Then a front comes through overnight into Sunday. Better chance of rain on Sunday. Actually, it's it's setting up to be a decent chance of rain on Sunday and much cooler temperatures. So we'll go from mid 80s and humid on Saturday to the low 70s and lower humidity on Sunday with those rain chances. And that'll uh, continue on Sunday night and probably lingering into Monday morning. And then we'll clear out again. Then we got another chance of rain, albeit not great, but by the middle part of next week. 70 at noon today, sunny, breezy, and then a lot of sunshine all day long. Good looking day, 77 for a high temperature today. Tomorrow, nice looking day as well. Kind of a coolish start and then up to 83 degrees. So we'll gain no, almost 35 degrees throughout the course of the day. A lot more humidity on Saturday, cloudy skies and a good chance of rain on Sunday with a high temperature right around low 70s. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Appreciate Still it. digging the yes. spring tie oh, thank collection. You from the Osterhage collection. Check it out, amazon.com. <laughs> 648, about no, 59 it's degrees. Not. <laughs> and they are politicians, businesswomen, and mavericks who should be praised during Women's History Month and every other day. So tomorrow on GMSA, we'll learn more about some powerful Texas women who have left a big mark on generations to come. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up as we take a peek out there. Lots of clouds still. Uh, we will be right back.
An argument at a homeless camp in the 4800 block of West Military near Medina Base Road remains under investigation this morning after San Antonio police say one man almost lost his finger. It's not known what prompted the argument, but things violently escalated when a machete was used and that man's finger was almost cut off. According to police, this started just before one this morning at the homeless camp, which was set to be in the woods right next to Pearsall Park. The man who is believed to be in his 30s was found on Old Pearsall Road and Medina Base Road, not too far from the camp. Camp. Multiple crews were on the scene to investigate, but police say the man was not being cooperative. He refused to go to the hospital for treatment until he got his cell phone back. Now, police are not sure if that man was the instigator involved in this argument, and they have not said if another suspect has been identified. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. As a community mourns and investigators work to piece together what happened at this grocery store in Boulder, Colorado, President Joe Biden is pushing Congress to do something and pass what he calls common sense gun legislation. We have to act to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future. But as it always has been, there's a sharp divide when it comes to legislation aimed at gun control. We can't allow this to become normal. And it's not just the mass shootings, it's the daily shooting. And I think we just have to keep pushing the members of Congress who are unwilling to support it because this matters. The weight of legislation should be against the criminals, not against law-abiding citizens. There are bad people who do bad things and we need a way to protect ourselves. With Congress unlikely to move quickly on gun legislation, the White House is weighing whether to issue a number of gun safety measures through executive action though exactly what those would be is still unclear. It's not just about uh, addressing uh, gun access. That's important. Uh, and obviously there's legislation that's under consideration on background checks. It's also about addressing community violence. Either way, through legislation or executive action, talk of stricter gun regulations has the gun industry prepping for a surge in sales. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Well, later today on GMS 89, she was the controversial constable, Bear County Precinct 2. But now Michelle Barrientes Vela is out of office and facing criminal charges. Dylan Collier explores what happened in a one hour investigative special area tonight right here on Case at 12. He joins us live today at nine to debrief what went into making the special. Right now it's five till. Let's go straight to the traffic lab and Samuel King. Thank you, uh, Mark and Stephanie. Uh, 1604 Bandera Road, uh, some uh, delays uh, building there, so we'll keep an eye on that. Some travel times here, 24 minutes coming in from Bernie to downtown, 29 minutes uh, coming in on 281, 27 minutes on 35 for New Braunfels. Let's take a quick look at the uh, maps here if we can. Uh, things looking fairly good in the area, but again, we mentioned this uh, slowdown here, uh, 1604 at Bandera. It was uh, on uh, Bandera, but now more on 1604, and we'll have more on that coming up throughout the morning. Mike, how's the weather looking? Actually, it has improved quite a bit. We had some severe storms overnight and some rain earlier, maybe a few wet spots on the roads, but uh, all the rain has moved on out of here now. 57 degrees in town, low 50s in the hill country. It is windy, however, 26 mile per hour winds at Randolph. We've got gusts 30, 35 out there. Windier this morning. Uh, it's going to ease up a little bit later on today. It's plenty of sunshine, 77, low humidity, and just a great looking day. 80s tomorrow, still a really comfortable day, and then we have more humidity Saturday and another rain chance Sunday in cooler temperatures. Samuel, Mike, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you guys, and we're glad it's going to turn out to be a nice day. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you back here at 9.